I started this challenge as a joke, I thought it's a funny idea. But this weapon turned out to be extremely potent in certain situations, especially as I started using it more strategically. Now I consider continuing this character, maybe as a series with live commentary, because I'm truly curious how far this weapon can carry me. If you want to see this, feel free to rate this little movie and write me a comment below. Regardless, let's get into the extreme ups and downs of this playthrough. I was about to get my first weapon and my only weapon, the chopper. The chopper usually drops from Dexidious the Invincible and its unique ability is that it has a broken trigger, meaning it doesn't stop firing after you touch the trigger once. With a magazine size of over 1000 it's designed to eat through all the ammo you have with only one click of the mouse button. I already had to scratch for ammo on my first encounter with bandits. In Borderlands 2 when you are low in one ammo type, this game blesses you with random ammo drops being more likely to be of this exact type. This mechanic carried me through this very first gunfight. Also the bully monks. Could have hardly done it without them. Hammerlock activating the power for the vending machines in his little town is usually not worth a mention, but this time having this vendor working was a precondition for me to complete Hammerlock's side missions. I noticed that my specimen of a chopper had an extra unique property. Every time I level up, it levels up with me. Also, it doesn't say it on the label, but this weapon by default consumes 6 ammo for every shot producing 4 projectiles. The fire rate of my weapon is 17.7 .7 shots per second, which makes it eat uh, 106.2 ammo per second. And I can only carry 280 at this point in the game, which means after every ammo refill I can only shoot for 2.6 seconds. But I also find a little bit of ammo everywhere, so my situation is not quite as bad as these numbers just made it appear like. It would still turn out to be the biggest limiting factor of this whole playthrough and my main cause of death. Luckily the Vlad of Barrel of any chopper has to spin up before it can reach its maximum fire rate, which made it possible for me to shoot only one or two rounds when I'm careful, meaning I would have to perform a drop reload immediately after pulling the trigger, forcing the gun to cancel the firing. I decided to try and fight through Blackburn Cove and do the side mission with Midgemong. After having reached the bandit camp I had to walk back twice to the start of the map to refill ammo. And even then I left bandits behind alive as I left later. Facing Midgemong I really learned my lesson to walk into battle with confidence. With large enemies especially I was forced to stand right in front of them so I could use my ammunition effectively enough to finish them off and get away. You might have noticed that I pick up all the drops all the time. I didn't want to run out of money ever. That was a constant concern of mine. Huh? For the fight against Boom Boom, I prepared myself with my signature move, entering the fight with 280 bullets in the map. It went as easy as I could have possibly hoped for. Despite it, I had to go for another ammo refill immediately. On the way to Captain Flint I ignored as many of the enemies as I could, only quickly killing 3 baddest marauders for the XP and the mandatory trio bullying claptrap, for which I didn't even have enough ammo left. Good that there was a vendor right before Flint's arena, so after climbing all the way up there I jumped down again to make Clappy feel as safe as he has to feel in order to move on. Flint was a much easier kill than Boom Boom. I could have even perforated him for one whole second longer if I was that kind of person. Fun fact. If you have to visit the vendor during the flint fight, you can simply jump up here. You probably knew that. But I promise, I found out a few things during this playthrough that you definitely don't know yet. I did my best not to crash into anyone in this tunnel successfully and I bought my first legendary from Dr. Zad's machine. Though I realized I shouldn't wear it because the cradle deals damage to enemies. And I was going to use the chopper exclusively so I could experience its capabilities to the fullest. I couldn't quite kill all of Reese's attackers, but the Rex had me covered. Oh good boy! Someone's getting a treat! 
In the bandit camp I felt like the psychos expected my arrival or something. So that was my first death. Also a death to a lack of ammo. Yeah, crazy Earl would become a very meaningful trading partner this time. I farmed a little bit more iridium and I increased my ammo carrying capacity to 700, which equals to 6.6 .6 seconds of firing non-stop. Still, my signature move had to be performed 4 times while clearing southpaw steam and power. This area was easy, just a little time consuming with all the running. Back in Sanctuary, I won the jackpot! The iridium jackpot. But that's actually perfect for me because that allowed me to buy another SDU and carry another 140 rifle bullets around. The way I fought this better cycle, it had become common practice at this point, scrambling for ammo while running from baddies. I met someone who was eager to fight by my side and I was thrilled. I let him have as much fun as he wanted to have before betraying him for his XP. Fighting those intruders, Lilith wasn't helpful in the slightest. The way she messed with their pathfinding, plus the bright lights and all the screaming, I would have been done faster without her. And then I had to bring her drugs to recover from all that unnecessary effort? Lilith, you could have just sat there in the corner and enjoyed the show and we would have all been better off. To save Lilith's boyfriend, I had to steal some car parts from the cars and infiltrate the bloodshots. I was able to kill those cars in record speed. The thing is, when you're not in the car yourself, the bandit vehicles, they start charging at you deliberately and that's how they got me. I saw myself go down for the first time while I was shooting. That was an odd surprise. And I took my time with the last part after Lilith had blinded me constantly a few minutes prior. I didn't feel like I owed her the favor of rushing this. Guys, have you ever heard that laugh from Maya? I mean, they must have had a blast in the studio recording that on the 10th try. Anyways, Badmore got chopped in no time. Um, I spoke too soon. So what was I saying? Badmore was nearly as easily defeated as Captain Flint, so I farmed him a few more times for XP and also for all that shiny iridium. With level 14 reached and an ammo capacity of nearly 1000, and after completing another side mission for good measure, I was finally ready to go and free Roland from the torturous bloodshots. Empty. Mad Mike with his powerful launcher can be annoying sometimes. And he almost was this time, because I had not went and bought a fresh batch of ammo, because I wanted to prevent the bandits from getting a chance to start respawning on me. In total I had to go and refill ammo only three times in this maze. The worst was behind me, bloodshot ramparts was easier, mainly because loaders are generally more stationary than bandits. The baddest loader ate 100 bullets, the warden 150, and Roland's turret generously gave me all those bullets back over the span of one second? I mean, how have I never realized how OP this bullet regeneration is? Like, they didn't even change the code from Borderlands 1 there, I feel like. Next up, Wilhelm would have to be defeated. I was not worried about that, but he would be level 18, so I figured I should level myself up sufficiently with a few side missions. I picked those missions where there was as little killing and shooting involved as possible because killing and shooting was very closely tied with running around a lot and I just didn't enjoy all that physical activity. With the mutated badass rockets, I got a little ambitious. I died to them twice. Because of... nobody would have guessed because my ammo ran out, of course. But I don't feel too bad about it. Having killed 20 of them myself, that's not bad at all. Wilhelm's best defense against my chopper was to push me away a bit, and it was effective to some degree. Back in Sanctuary I installed the bait, and I want to show you guys something that you might actually have never seen before, because you're usually busy saving Roland while this monolith of metal emerges from the core of the city. In Sanctuary I was also able to purchase another SDU in preparation for the upcoming battle in Overlook, where I was actually going to engage in the fighting. The only reason for that being that there is an ammo vendor, right in the center of the action. But before that, there was the fridge. And another death. 
and another one that felt just as unfair as the first one. But to my delight, when I came around for the third time, there was an epic battle that unfolded in front of me. I've seen Crystalisks fight with the Varkids and the Costa Caverns before, but somehow I never realized that there was such an enmity, apparently, between them and the rats. Life goals achieved, I guess. The outwash was easy, as I had expected, and the beacon in Overlook had an awesome day with me on its side. And not to forget Marcus's vendor, the true hero of this fight. I would have to be level 21 to match Bloodwing in the preserve, so I went looking for side missions on a relatively high level, such as Hammerlock's Slappy mission. I only realized Slappy was 4 levels above me as I had already been slapped to my knees. When I killed him on the second attempt, I was stunned at the XP I received, so I farmed Slappy a few more times. The good, the bad and the Mordecai was also rather quickly completed, and I also did the two side missions in Overlook since both did not require any violence whatsoever. Also, by completing Stalker of Stalkers, I would unlock Best Mother's Day Ever, which would give me the Love Thumper shield that would help me to drastically speed up my signature move. The Love Thumper takes a very long time until it starts recharging again. Combined with Fleet, I just had to let enemies deplete my shield so I could run very fast for as long as my shield was empty. In the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve, I got my second legendary from Pimone. Coming up to the big loader, I planted myself in front of him and painted him in lead grey. Like a real man. I mean, what else should I do? The loot midgets were not there. I wasn't sure whether or not the boxes would reset to the unlooted state after walking back to Sanctuary, picking up Tannis' mission and re-entering the area. The stalker piles did reset, the Hyperion Gate did as well, but those boxes? Nope. I saved and quit, and after I gave that loader a third layer of paint, I prepared myself to fight four midgets at once, by equipping a class mod that boosted my magazine size. That's all I could do for preparation. Then I went for the 10th refill since entering the preserve. Yep, the 10th. Also, because I opened almost every single little box there, I found 4 additional loot midgets across the map. On the 13th refill, the stalkers had already respawned. Luckily, I didn't have to come back again, if I wouldn't die to Bloodwing, that is. I started the Bloodwing fight by hiding in a corner, waiting for the bird to land. That way, I thought. I could get very close to her and only few bullets would miss my target. It turned out so much thinking and planning had not been necessary. My next task was to make friends with Brick. I went in with a strategy and this time it did actually pay off to catch a thought before firing. I even joined some Iridium and I gave it one shot at harvesting some more from a questionable source successfully. Did you know? Brick will wait for you to be there besides him before he shares his genius idea. It makes me feel like he's hungry for attention. And then he doesn't like it when you walk out of sight and leave him to his own. <sighs> Poor Brick. I felt so sad for him I even accepted that one mission that nobody ever likes to do. Usually this mission is difficult and I am well used to failing it multiple times. Usually I lack in firepower and in survivability to stop the loaders from damaging this black rate too much. This run is truly unusual, this mission was a breeze. My immense firepower made up for everything else. Even some of the bandits made it through. In opportunity the body double died, the constructor died, I died and the super badass had to die for the purpose of healing my ego. Visiting the thousand cuts for a second time, you would probably expect the large badass constructor to be the most difficult enemy on the way up to the bunker. But that was not the case. I had come across a highly annoying loot midget who killed me twice and who even followed me back to the ammo vendor at the start of the map. And I couldn't kill him because I couldn't hit him because he was just that tiny. Ultimately a bandit copter did the job for me and I was free to continue to the bunker. The bunker went down in two cycles or so, 
I only died to it because I wanted to capture the loot explosion for this video. Control Core Angel kept me busy for 53 minutes. Mostly I was just waiting for Angel to spawn ammo for me. I died two more times there. It should be obvious to you which mission I would choose to do next. Bear of bad news, of course. After that I defeated the bunker two more times, just for fun, and I got something. Something that really came in handy, as in Iridium Blight a certain mission sparked my interest. Become my bitch. Sacrificing that legendary, I gave Jack all he asked for while keeping my pride. With the reward of this mission, I was able to buy the very last rifle SDU for normal Vault Hunter mode before I entered Sawtooth Cauldron. I wasn't worried about fighting the four ambush commanders, but without the SDU I had just acquired I would not have defeated the last one of them. It was a stressful situation and in the hast of the moment I found out about my siren powers. It scared the hell out of me and I had to exit the game out of pure shock. I was quite convinced that in this map I could not kill all enemies without having to deal with them respawning at some point, so I just ran through where I could. Also I felt forced to run towards enemies sometimes, because being close to them often meant having a better chance of scoring a second wind in case I would go down. Here comes the fight against Mortar, and it was the absolutely most fast paced Mortar fight I've ever had. Once again I didn't have much of a choice but to charge towards him. The copter fight on the tower in contrary was probably the most relaxed one ever. After clearing the way to the boneyard with the stolen explosives, I went through the first planting station like a god. The second station demanded more of my lead grey paint, so I had to take a route I had never taken before, driving from the second pump station to the entrance of the boneyard. That felt odd. Saturn. I died to him. But hey, he was four levels above me. Coming around the second time I survived until my bullets ran out and I had to go for a refill. In case you don't know, Saturn simply despawns if you are either too far away or away for too long, I'm not sure, but I knew I had to be quick and I made it back with Saturn still being there, to my surprise genuinely, and I got him on the second attempt. Being 4 levels under level. After getting overrun by exploders, I chose to get into the building in a way that might be new to you, entering directly on the upper floors. After another stupid death to the last remaining constructor, I was out of there on the way to the Heroes Pass. Here's confirmation that you can indeed get crushed by the secondary set of doors. An even more interesting thing happened immediately after, as the two turrets at the door were deployed and Claptrap gained access to them, all while I was away for the signature move. That interesting thing that happened was nothing. Nothing happened. And only as I got back with a full mag, the turrets spawned. And they were hostile towards me when they actually should be helping me at that point. When you still ask yourself why that's so interesting, you don't know about the save the turret achievement that everyone can get this way with zero effort, just by walking away at the right time. I should make a separate video out of this finding, actually. In the Heroes Pass I was immediately confronted with some serious enemies. I was forced to turn around and buy ammo as often as never before. I found crates I had never noticed before, I set a new record for dying in one area as often as never before, in this challenge that is. My fourth death there was especially frustrating. I thought I was doomed with those 181 bullets remaining and a considerable distance between me and the little turret on the constructor. I was literally on the edge of my seat after this unlikely second win, but my excitement was short-lived. After that, loaders started respawning on my way back to Marcus's ammo vendor, and after a quick evaluation I thought I should better reset the map and simply run through. For crossing open areas like here with enemies shooting at you, the chopper is a completely useless tool to protect yourself. You have to play offensive and get right next to your targets. Like this. And I believe this was the first time ever that a cutscene skip saved my life. I immediately realized I had a bit of a problem as I sprayed my remaining bullets onto the warrior. This is what Jack dropped by the way. Pretty awesome I would say if I wasn't indifferent to all loot in this world. I wanted to see how far my maximum ammo carrying capacity of 1260 would get me. 
it was quite underwhelming, so I chose to go and farm another level or two. On the last kill, King Mong dropped me a useful relic, one that boosted my ammo capacity significantly. But still, the ammo I could carry into the warrior arena only got the warrior down to about 60% of itself. It's not bad, but for the rest I had to rely on the Hyperion ammo supply with the 100 second cooldown. After a decent 13 minutes of fighting, the warrior fell. Jack fell and I had proven that you can beat Borderlands 2 with no weapons other than a chopper. This challenge definitely has potential beyond normal Vault Hunter mode and I expect money, in-game money, to become a huge problem at some point. I kind of hope this movie will do relatively well on YouTube and I can continue this, but that would be in a slightly different style. Anyways, have a beautiful day everyone. Bye!